The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his, his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I am him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of this is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and, are de and still die, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the metaphors that we use frequently in the language of love is food, isn't it? I love you so much, I want to eat you up. How many of you have heard that? How many of you have said that? Okay. Uh, that seems to be one of the ways to uh, really express the uh, in human language, something that is beyond the power of human language, uh, the power of intimacy, the power of love, that um, we want to take the other person into ourselves in some way or other. And that precisely is what Jesus is doing in the Eucharist. He's not saying he wants to eat us up, but he's inviting us to eat him up. And as we know, in the language of love, this is not cannibalism. The people who heard Jesus in the gospel that we just uh, read, uh, they heard this as, as if it were cannibalism. How can you give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink? And Jesus didn't say, and this is important, Jesus didn't say, as some people who are Christian, but not Catholic, kind of like to hear it, Jesus didn't say, oh, wait a minute, you misunderstood me. That's merely symbolic. That's not real. As we know, the language of love is real. And Jesus invites <coughs> us to partake of himself. Now, this partaking of himself has a very interesting effect because any nutritionist knows that you are or you become what you eat. You know, and if you fill your body with junk food, you become like what you eat. If you fill your body with wholesome nourishment, you become like what you eat. That the food that we eat becomes so intimately one with us that we actually become something like our food. And Jesus says, aha, that's the kind of union that I want to give to my followers. I want to give my followers something so deep, so precious, so intimate that they can become one with me. Now, in the second reading that we heard, 
a little bitty piece of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. St. Paul spent most of the letter to the Corinthians speaking a slightly different language of love. He loved, St. Paul loved that Christian community in Corinth so much that he knew that he had to protect them from evil. And in protecting them from evil, he basically, he had to straighten them out. He had to tell them where they were going wrong and why they were going wrong and what the remedy for it was. Where were they going wrong? Well, they were, the Christian community at Corinth was probably a group of people about the size that would fit into this church. No larger than that. Probably only a couple of hundred people. In a city of maybe 10 or 20, 30,000 uh, who were pagans. Who were not only pagans, but they, many of them had a very, very worldly and sinful lifestyle. And here was the small group of a couple of hundred people who received with joy the word of Christ. And they saw in that word of Christ a newness of life. And that newness of life they wanted to share with others. They couldn't share it with others by preaching at them. You know, you better straighten out and maybe God will be good to you. No. They had to share that word of life that was Jesus with others by living that life. But to do that, they had to be unified. And St. Paul gives a very, very important insight into the source of that unity. When they come together to share the bread and wine of the Eucharist, that is no longer just an ordinary meal. That is no longer just bread and wine. That is the body and blood of Christ. That is the one body. It's not a bunch of different bodies. It's one body given to us so that we may be one in him. And St. Paul carries that image even farther into something that's very, very real. That you are one with Christ because you are members of his one body. Aha! Remember, you are what you eat. What you receive, what you eat in the Eucharist is the one body of Christ that makes us one. When you come to receive Holy Communion, it's important to realize that you're not just getting Jesus. Jesus isn't simply coming to you to be your own personal possession and to make you good and to bring you to heaven. That's part of it. But there is a much bigger reality that Jesus is coming to you and 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 me in order to make us one in him. Because Jesus can't be divided. He can only be one. And so when you say amen, when the priest or Eucharistic minister says the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, you are saying amen to the Jesus who makes you one with the person who has received before you and after you, to the person who is at the other side of church from you to the person who is also a member of your Christian family that you don't like very well, that you don't get along with very well, who perhaps doesn't like you very much and doesn't get along with you. Maybe even, and this happens as we know, fellow Christians, dedicated to Christ and yet fighting, struggling with one another. What Jesus is telling us when we say amen to his body here, we are also saying amen, yes, I believe that I am one body with that other person. Now, 
If we as Christians, if we who share in the Eucharist, share the body of Christ, and actually live the rest of our lives as if that body of Christ really, really means something to us, our love and care for one another and our love and devotion to the mission of Christ, to make him present both in word and in action to others, would transform our world. You want to know how to change the world? It is to allow Jesus in the Eucharist to change you and me. And we together can then bring Jesus Christ to those who are so hungry, so thirsty for his presence, so in need of what Jesus has to bring, the peace and healing of his body.